How's it going guys? It is 3.31 a.m. 23rd of April here in Japan. We have a past level question. No, I'll say it's medium difficulty question for step one, step two. In fact, nearly identical question shows up on one of the internal medicine forms for 2CK despite this looking very much like a step one question. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give me a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, lman underscore medical, mhlman underscore medical. Links down below. I mean, Telegram lists the Telegram group and channel down below. And I'll start the clip. 14 year old boy with Crohn's disease. He has one month history of worsening foul smelling stools that float. Question wants to know the most likely explanation for the patient's steatorrhea. Okay, so that's what we have here foul smelling stools that float. Very buzzy. This is the past level component. Okay, then our answer choices are a little bit weird. So, Let's just hop through. Choice A, cytokine mediated effect, nebulous answer, choice wrong fucking answer. Okay, could refer to a myriad of things. What you do need to know for IBD, not just Crohn, but UC as well, is that TNF alpha is important in the pathophysiology. Okay, so you're going to use five ASA compounds first, mesalamine, sulfasalazine to treat, followed by steroids. USMLE is not going to force you to choose. If they do, choose the 5 ASA compound as the treatment. So after those don't work, they might ask you an agent that inhibits which of the following can be used in the treatment. And the answer is going to be TNF alpha, okay? Infliximab, adalimumab, etanercept, etc. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, decreased bile acid production, wrong fucking answer, okay? Doesn't really refer to anything in particular. This is literally just a distractor, okay? So when I give you some details regarding some of the answer choices, this is literally nothing, okay? So bile acids, obviously, uh, part of bile that will enable the emulsification, the physical, not chemical breakdown of fats, okay? So breaks down fat into smaller uh, physical pieces, literally, okay, within the duodenum, enabling better absorption. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, decreased enterohepatic circulation of bile salts is the correct answer. And as I prefaced with, this is the exact answer. I believe it's internal medicine form seven for 2CK. The clinical master series might be form eight, okay? So in Crohn's disease, the terminal ileum is classically involved, okay? Mouth to anus, but terminal ileitis. So not only intrinsic factor where we can get B12 deficiency as a, as a result of Crohn, but bile acids are also absorbed at the terminal ileum. So if you have decreased reabsorption of bile acids, decreased enterohepatic circulation of bile acids, it means we have decreased bile acids up top at the duodenum in bile, meaning decreased fat absorption. Okay, and that is the mechanism for steatorrhea and Crohn. It's also the mechanism, and I made a recent YouTube clip on this within the past couple of weeks, for why there is increased proclivity for calcium oxalate urolithiasis in Crohn. Because if you have increased fat within the small bowel lumen because you're not absorbing it, you're going to have more fat binding calcium, meaning less calcium binding oxalate. Oxalate is better absorbed. So Real quick, chopping through the final answer choices, choice D, exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, wrong fucking answer, refers to cystic fibrosis as well as chronic pancreatitis, okay? Long discussion regarding those two, but for example, if you get an eight-year-old boy with chronic respiratory tract infections, pneumonias, and has A, D, E, K, I want to say mainly D and E, those are the two deficiencies that are assessed for cystic fibrosis. They'll just want the mechanism. Answer is exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. Long discussion, as I said, uh, as well as chronic pancreatitis. So an alcoholic who has steatorrhea. Okay, so you're not going to have an elevation of pancreatic enzymes. It's going to be a burned out pancreas. We simply have decreased lipase and protease coming from the pancreas. So steatorrhea as well as increased uh, muscle fiber in stool. I've seen that in one of the NBME questions. Sounds weird. Regardless, in this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice E, increased beta-glucuronidase activity. Nebulous answer choice, wrong fucking answer. So this actually can be the correct answer for breast milk jaundice in pediatrics, where when we talk about uh, breastfeeding jaundice, breast milk jaundice, uh, there is a condition where uh, children who develop pathologic jaundice where they have consumption of breast milk 
there is an enzyme called beta-glucuronidase within breast milk that can deconjugate bilirubin, leading to increased enterohepatic circulation, okay? So it's a long discussion what I'm thinking about right now because we could do a 40-minute chat as far as pathologic jaundice and pediatrics. Uh, breastfeeding jaundice is when a kid is not attaching to the breast well, and that also leads to an increased enterohepatic circulation of bile acids. Point is, wrong fucking answer. You know the deal to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.